The entire premise of this video is basically just that I really like trains. Okay, so I've used the Montreal and Toronto metro slash subway systems at various points in my life, but I thought I'd take a joyride on each of them and pit them against each other to see which one is actually better. So I'm gonna give a quick overview of each of them and then I'm gonna give them points for various factors. That being said, I'm not an expert, just a transit enthusiast, so take what I say with a grain of salt. So first off, we have the Toronto subway system run by the TTC or the Toronto Transit Commission. Took a red-eye flight to Toronto, so if these clips suck, blame it on the sleep deprivation. Caveat for all of this, I'm only going to be looking at the main train lines in both of these cities, so I'm not including the buses, intercity transport, light rail transit, trams, or anything like that, even though all of that is super cool. So with that, the Toronto subway system consists of three lines, the Young University line, the Laura Danforth line, and the Shepherd line. The trains run from approximately 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. on weekdays and Saturday, and 8 a.m. to 2 a.m. on Sundays. Next, we have Montreal's metro system, which is run by the STM, or the Système de Transport de Montréal, it consists of four lines, the green, orange, yellow, and blue lines. The trains run from 5.30 a.m. to 1 a.m. or 1.30 a.m. on Saturdays. Okay, so let's get into the actual juicy part. I'm going to be comparing them based on cost, vastness of service, safety, innovation, and cleanliness or how nice they look slash feel. Okay, it's a new day now, but let's get into the comparison. So starting off with cost, for Toronto, the fare is currently $3.35 for an adult, but here are the costs for the other ages. The transfer time is two hours, so basically you have two hours to connect from one place to another. There's also the Presto card system, which basically lets you load up a card with tickets, or you can use a monthly or yearly pass on it. And the cost for a Presto card itself is $4. Fares just went up in Montreal, so it's $3.75 for a single fare. Montreal also uses a zoning system, so you use different tickets depending on what part of Montreal you're in. The STM uses Opus cards as a kind of equivalent to the Presto cards. You can load them up and also get the monthly or annual passes on them. There are also discounts for students and seniors where you can get reduced fares. The standard Opus card is six dollars the point goes to toronto for this category the fares are generally a little bit cheaper and the fare system is also a little bit simpler to use next for vastness of service montreal has one more metro line than toronto but the lines are longer in toronto i know i said i wouldn't talk about the other transportation methods but toronto has also has a lot more options in terms of options to transfer from after you've taken the subway. So this includes buses, trams, intercity rail. Montreal's bu bus network is a little bit less integrated with the Metro itself. The zone system that Montreal uses is also potentially confusing, whereas Toronto has a flat fare for everything. So that's potentially more user friendly. Union Station is really big and confusing and I'm notoriously bad at directions. Another aspect I wanted to mention for both of them is accessibility. In short, they both kind of had issues with this historically. I couldn't find any concrete evidence that one city is better than the other in this aspect, so it would be cool to go to every station to actually assess it, but for that reason I'm not considering this for my final verdict. So with that, Toronto gets the point for this category as well. I will say that I think it might be a little bit unfair because Toronto has a higher population density than Montreal and more people use the TTC. The next category is safety. So this one is actually kind of hard to measure because neither of the municipalities have a standard metric for how they measure safety. So take these numbers with a grain of salt. From what I could find, in 2022, the Montreal police reported an average of 26 assaults per month, 
whereas the TTC reported an average of 83 violent incidents per month. Again, I don't know what either of these jurisdictions consider to be an assault or a violent incident or whether those are the same thing. So that could also account for the difference in these numbers. But adjusting for the differences in ridership, Montreal sees 1.3 assaults per million people per month, whereas Toronto sees 1.7 violent incidents per million people per month. Outside of the numbers, from what I've seen online and just speaking to people in both of these cities, I do get the sense that people feel safer on Montreal's metro. And even in researching for this video, I came across way more news stories about the TTC than the STM. I did also want to mention that you're still significantly more likely to die or get injured in a car than on a train. So you're not as safe as you think you are in your personal vehicle. And with that mildly morbid thought, Montreal gets the point for this category. Next, we have innovation. This is a huge category and I could literally make a video about transit innovation in both of these two cities on its own. But I'm just going to talk about some of the biggest projects. For Montreal, the REM has been a huge ongoing project. It is a completely electric light rail system that connects the main island of Montreal to several other areas. Once it's completed, it will be the longest driverless metro in the world. It's super cool and I could rave about it for days, but I will refrain. In general, Montreal is a world leader in terms of green energy. There's so much innovation happening everywhere from the bike lanes to electric buses and so much more. For Toronto, there isn't really one big project that has had a lot of publicity, but they are creating a completely new metro line called the Ontario Line with a bunch of new features like platform doors and full automation, which is super exciting. In general, a lot of upcoming projects are going to be upgrading or expanding existing infrastructure to add new stops and improve accessibility of current stations. I feel like this category is probably one of the most subjective I think I am going to give it to Montreal because they are literally changing the game in terms of transit innovation. Okay, so next we have cleanliness or how nice the metro system looks. I haven't been to all of the stations in either of these cities, so I'm not the most objective onlooker. In general, the Montreal metro stations do feel cleaner. There are also a bunch of cool architectural features in each of these stations, and they all kind of have their own character, which I didn't feel as much in Toronto. Montreal and Toronto also have underground cities that connect the transit to shopping, office buildings, and a bunch of other amenities. Montreal's underground city is a little bit larger and more extensive than Toronto's. It also serves to protect you from Montreal's winters. Unsurprisingly, this category goes to Montreal. So in the end, Toronto has two points and Montreal has three, which makes Montreal the winner. If you disagree with me, feel free to let me in the comments. There's something about riding public transit that makes you incredibly appreciative of the sheer might that it takes to build infrastructure like this. And I also think it's super cool to just experience something alongside millions of other riders. So as annoying as public transit can be sometimes, especially in North America, I'm so incredibly grateful that it exists. So on that cheesy note, I will see you next time. Bye!